Hello everyone, myself Komil Salenki, student at IIPS DAVV, present here to tell you something about IEEE 802.15.4 wireless technology. So, IEEE 802.15.4 wireless technology is a short range communication system intended to provide applications with relaxed throughput and latency requirements in wireless personal area networks. This protocol also specifies the medium access control sublayer and physical layer for low rate wireless personal area networks. The main field of application of this technology is the implementation of wireless sensor networks. Now the key features of IEEE 802.15.4 are low complexity, low cost, low power consumption, low data rate transmission, and it is supported by either fixed or moving devices. Now, next that comes up is IEEE 802.15.4 physical layer. The IEEE 802.15.4 core system consists of radio frequency transceiver and the protocol stack as it is depicted in the figure. So as it is shown in the figure, the physical medium is connected to the physical layer where the physical layer and MAC are operated with the IEEE 802.15.4 whereas the upper layers above the MAC layer uses the ZigBee protocol. Also, the 802.15.4 physical layer operates in three different unlicensed bands according to the geographical area where the system is deployed. However, spread uh, spectrum techniques are wherever mandatory to reduce the interference level in shared unlicensed band. Also, this unlicensed band specifies a total of 27 half duplex channels across the three frequency bands. Then, according to the energy efficiency issue, low rate and low duty cycle are provided. IEEE 802.15.4 compliant devices are active only, only during a short time and the standard allows some devices to operate with both the transmitter and the receiver inactive for over 99% of the time. Then comes up is the IEEE 802.15.4 MAC layer. It uses a protocol based on the CSMA CA algorithm that is Carrier Sense Multiple Access Collision Avoidance Algorithm, which requires listening to the channel before transmitting to reduce the probability of collisions with other ongoing transmissions. It defines two different operational modes which correspond to two different channel access mechanisms. Namely, the first one is the beacon enabled mode and the second one is non beacon enabled mode. So, non beacon enabled mode. In the non beacon enabled mode, Nodes uses an unslotted CSMS CA protocol to access the channel and transmit their packets. The algorithm is implemented using unit of time called back of periods. First, each node will delay any activities for a random number of back of periods. After this delay, channel sensing is performed for one unit of time. If the channel is found free, the node immediately starts the transmission. If instead the channel is busy, the node enters again in the back of state. There exists a maximum number of time the node can try to access the channel, that is to sense the channel. When this maximum is reached, the algorithm ends and the transmission cannot occur. So now the second one is the beacon enabled mode. In this mode, the access to the channel is managed through a super frame, starting with a packet called beacon 
transmitted by the WPAN coordinator that is the wireless personal area network coordinator. The super frame as shown in the figure may contain an inactive path allowing nodes to go in the sleeping mode whereas the active part is divided into two parts the contention excess period and the contention free period composed of guaranteed time slots that can be allocated by the sync to specify nodes and also the use of gts that is the guaranteed time slots is optional and it is also important that the transmission begins with a beacon and ends with a beacon further the operational modes of IEEE 802.15.4 has been shown through a flowchart that is the IEEE 802.15.4 MAC layer operates in two mode that is which we have already seen first one is the beacon enabled and the other one is the non beacon enabled also the non beacon enabled uses unslotted csmsca whereas the beacon enabled uses super frame and super frame uh, on further on is divided into two parts that is the contention access period that is without gts or the guaranteed time slots and con contention free periods that is with gts also the contention access period uses slotted csmsca whereas contention free period may use slotted csmsca or slot allocations next that comes up is ieee 802.15.4 network topologies to overcome the limited transmission range multi hop self organizing network topologies are required so these can be realized taking into account that ieee 802.15.4 defines two types of devices that is full function device and the reduced function device so the first is full function device the full function device of the ffd contains the complete set of mac services and can operate as either a pan coordinator or is a simple network device pan coordinator is the personal area network coordinator then the second one is the reduced function device or the rfd the rfd contains a reduced set of mac services and can operate only as a network device the two basic topologies are allowed here that is star topology and peer to peer topology star topology it is formed around an fft acting as a pan coordinator which is the only node allowed to form links with more than one device as it is shown in the figure star topology is preferable in case coverage area is small and low latency is required by the application the second one is the peer to peer topology in this each device is able to form multiple direct links to other devices so that redundant paths are available also this type of topology is preferable in case a large area should be covered and latency is not a critical issue also ieee 802.15.4 can also support other network topologies such as cluster mesh and tree as described in the zigbee alliance specifications as it is shown in the figure a zigbee compliant tree network topology that the pan coordinator always resides at the level 0 further down comes the routers and the rfds or the ffds that is reduced function devices or the fully function devices are always the leaf nodes then all devices belonging to a particular network regardless of the type of topology use the unique ieee 64 bit addresses and the short 16 bit address is allocated by the pan coordinator to uniquely identify the network so at last to summarize ieee 802.15.4 is a standard 
that was developed to provide a framework in the lower layers in the OSI model for low cost and low power wireless connectivity networks. It provides the MAC and physical layers, leaving the upper layers to be developed for specific higher latest standards like Thread, Zigbee, Six Low, WPAN, and many others. As a result, IEEE 802.15.4 does not take the limelight in the way that other standards might, but nevertheless, it forms the basic for a very large number of standards and accordingly it is far more widely deployed than may be apparent at first sight. Low power is one of the key elements of 802.15.4 as it is used in many areas where remote sensors need to operate on battery power possibly for years without attention. Thank you.